بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so إن شاء الله we'll continue from where we had left off last week and that's where the red hi- highlighted text is so the shaykh he continues he says woman kana ya'takidu anna huda ghayri nabi alayhi salatu wa salamu khayrun min hadihi wa an wa anna hukma ghayrihi ahsanu min hukmihi lam yuhakik hadha al-asl al-azim وهو الشهادة لنبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم وبالرسالة وهو الشهادة وهو الشهادة لنبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم بالرسالة لم يحقق أن شهادة محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لأن شهادة أنه صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول الله تتضمن الإيمان تتضمن الإيمان به وبصدقه وأنه بلغ البلاغ المبين وأنه ما ترق خيرا إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شرا إلا حضرها منه وأن خير الهدى حديه حديه وخير الحكم حكمه وخير الشرع شريعته صلى الله عليه وسلم وقد كان عليه الصلاة والسلام كل يوم كل يوم جمعة إذا خطب الناس كما في حديث جابر رضي الله عنه كان يقول أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى, هدى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة فكان يكرر ذلك كل جمعة لأن هذا أصل أصل يقام عليه الدين وأساس تبنى عليه الملة أستق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فإذا كان إنسان يأتكد خلاف ذلك أين الدين وأين الإسلام وأين الإيمان إذا كان يأتكد أن هدى غير النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام خير من هدى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كمن يعظم هدي هديا او طريقه او سننا او اعمال الكافرين من يهود او نصارى او مجوس او غيرهم يعظم هديهم ويفخم اعمالهم ويرى انها خيرا من من هدى الاسلام وخيرا مما جاء به النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام فمن كان بهذه الصفه Aina Islamuhu Aina Dinuhu. So then the Shaykh he says He says So whoever believes that the guidance of other than the Prophet وسلم, is better than the guidance of the Prophet or or other than the rulings what the Prophet وسلم, came with or other than the likes of that if somebody believes that somebody else's guidance and somebody else's judgments and rulings are better than the prophets, then the Sheikh says, by way of that, you know, they fall into kufr. And the Sheikh goes on to say <clears throat> that this, this shahada, the shahada with regard the testification with regard to the Prophet ﷺ in terms of his messengership, then it's not actualized. When somebody is in this situation where they they believe that somebody else's guidance or somebody else's judgment and rulings are better, the Sheikh says it's not actualized. The the the, the testification 
of the Prophet's messengership, and that's the second shahada, the second testification is not actualized. This is what the Sheikh has mentioned so far here. He says because the shahada, the shahada, the testification that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a messenger of Allah, then you know part of that is iman, having iman in him and and believing in him. What the Prophet Prophet ﷺ came with, believing in the message that he came with, the clear message that he came with, and that believing in the message that he came, message that he came with, in that he didn't leave anything that was good except he told us about it, and he didn't leave, he didn't warn us of anything that's evil except he warned us about it. The Prophet ﷺ told us everything we need to know to be successful in this life and reach the akhirah. On a good stead. So the Sheikh he goes on to say, and that the best of guidance is his guidance. So this is what we should be believing that the best of guidance is the Prophet ﷺ's guidance, and the best of judgments and rulings are his, what he came with, and the best of laws are the laws that he came with, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the Sheikh goes on to say that the Prophet ﷺ, on every Yomul Jum'ah, as we're all aware. Every Yom al he used to say the following. On the, and this is hadith of Jabir radiallahu anhu as well, on the authority of the Prophet sallam, where he used to say, Amma ba'd, fa inna astakal hadith kalam Allah laka. We said at the start of the lesson, and it's mentioned in Arabic, so that the best of, the most truthful speech is the speech of Allah, and the best guidance, uh, and, the, and the best guidance is the guidance of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the worst of the affairs are the newly invented matters in the religion, and every newly invented matter in the religion, i.e., bid'ah, uh, um, is is a misguidance, and every misguidance is in the hellfire. That's the whole thing to the end. And the Sheikh says that the Prophet sallallahu used to repeat this every single Juma. He used to repeat this. Why? He says, because this is the foundation that our deen is built upon. These are the foundations of our deen. And our, our way of life and deen is built upon. The most truthful speech is the speech of Allah. The best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The shaykh goes on to say, so if there's a person who believes in other than that, in that which opposes this, then where is his religion? Where is his Islam? This is what the shaykh is saying. Where is his iman? Where is his creed? If he will, if he believes that the guidance of other than the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is better than the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Sheikh says, like the one who magnifies and glorifies, for example, a guidance, uh, a way of a person, uh, the life of a person, the way of a person, the. Um, uh, or the actions of the kuffar, the disbelievers from the Jews, the Christians, the Magians, the fire worshippers, and other than them. Whoever glorifies and blow, uh, whoever glorifies their way <clears throat> and sees it and sees it as something better, then this person, where is his Islam? The one who, who believes this, where is his Islam, and where is his iman? Um, in, in terms of in the Prophet Sallallahu and his messengership. So the Sheikh says, whoever has these characteristics, then obviously the person falls into kufr. Yeah. Then the Sheikh continues, he says, وَلَقَدْ امْتَدَحَ اللَّهُ أَزَّ وَجَلْ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمُ وَأَثْنَ عَلَى نَبِيَّ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ بِقَوْلِهِ جَلَ وَلَا وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٌ قال أئمة قال أئمة التفسير من الصحابة ومن اتبعهم بإحسان أي على دين كامل دين تام من كل وجه ولما سئلت عائشة رضي الله عائشة رضي الله عنها عن خلق النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قالت كان خلقه القرآن أي أنه عليه الصلاة والسلام عمل بأحكام القرآن وحدي القرآن وعذاب القرآن وأخلاق القرآن أمل بها عليه الصلاة والسلام على على التمام والكمال فكان أعبد الناس لله وعظمهم خشية له وكان أحسن الناس خلقا وأزكاهم أدبا وأتيبهم معاملة وأجملهم معاشرة صلوات الله وسلامه عليه 
وسيرته هو أعطر سيرة 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 وعد وعدبه أزكى عدب وخلقه أجمل الخلق ومعاملته أحسن أحسن المعاملة وليس أحد من الناس مهما على شأنه وارتفعت مكانته أكمل من هده وعدبه وخلقه صلى الله وسلامه عليه وكل من يطالع سيرة العطراء العطراء وعدبه الرفيع وخلقه الفاضل يعلم ذلك حتى إنه في زمانه عليه الصلاة والسلام كان يأتي إليه الرجل وليس على وجه الأرض أبغض إليه منه فما أن يراه ويرى خلقه العظيم وعدبه العالي الرفيع إلا ويتحول من لح من لحظته وليس على وجه الأرض أحب إليه منه وقد قال الله تعالى في هذا المعنى فبما رحمة من الله لنت لهم ولو كنت فضا غليظا قلبي لا لن فضوا من حولك So the shaykh continues and he says and Allah praised Allah Azza wa Jal praised the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran in many places as we know and one of the examples that the shaykh brings is from Surah Al-Qalam verse 4 and if we look at the meanings of the of, of the of the Arabic then we'll see we'll come to know this and where uh, the translation of this of this ayah verse 4 of Surah Al-Qalam and verily you O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are on an exalted standard of character i.e. manners and etiquettes the shaykh continues he says he says that the scholars of tafsir explaining the Quran from the Sahaba and whoever followed them in goodness they say that what does this mean? It means that it was on the most complete and upright deen from every single angle, from every single facet. And the Sheikh goes on to say, so, uh, when Aisha radiallahu anha um, was asked about the manners and etiquettes of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, she said that his manners were the Quran, were that of the Quran. And the Sheikh says, i.e., that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he acted, he acted by way of what the Quran preached, what, uh, by way of the speech of Allah jalla wa ala. You know, so he followed that. He was a, a, a living example of the Quran, what what Allah jalla wa ala came with in terms of the Quran speech and the guidance of the Qur'an and you know the etiquettes and the mannerisms within the Qur'an that we learn from the Qur'an the Prophet was a was a walking and talking example of that in its complete entirety and from every single angle it was perfect in that the Prophet was a perfect in that so the Sheikh brings some more examples he says for example the Prophet was the most you know fearful slave of Allah you know he was the most Worshipping of Allah Jalla wa Ala, he's the one who worship Allah the most. He was the most upright. He he was the most faithful of Allah. He was the best in terms of uh, he was the most pure, and in terms of et- his etiquettes and actions and the likes of that, the Sheikh brings. And the Sheikh he says, if you look into his seerah, seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then you'll see the, all those examples. The pureness of the Prophet ﷺ in, in all of his dealings with the people. You know how beautiful he was in terms of his etiquette, his dealings, how he dealt with the people, how he was with his family, strangers, everyone, the Muslims and non-Muslims. Then you see the perfect example and the high station of the Prophet ﷺ. So then the Shaykh continues, he says, and whoever you know, reads up and looks into the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu then he'll, he'll see, you know, these manners, these high, lofty manners and etiquettes of the Prophet Sallallahu and the way he was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the people 
as we know from the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, we know that, you know, people used to come to him, men used to come to him, and you wouldn't find anybody that would hate him. Obviously, after Islam, the Quraysh and all these things happened, you know, they started hating because of deen, but in terms of the Prophet before that as well, yeah, he was not known. Nobody, he was known to be trustworthy, you know, good person, high moral character, everything. And nobody hated him in that way, yeah? And the Shaykh just uh, repeats that here. And then he brings an ayah from the Quran again, Surah Al Imran, verse 159. For our reference, so if you go there, verse 159, this part of the ayah, and by the mercy of Allah, you dealt with them gently, and had you been severe and harsh hearted, they would have broken away from about you. Yeah? So that's that part of the ayah. So that also teaches us a lesson in how we deal with people of all walks of life, you know. Deal with them with, uh, you know, softness, you know, with love and establish their evidences. Doesn't mean to say, oh, you know, bend over backwards and, um, you know, let everybody run over you, no. But, you know, have that good, well, lofty mannered approach in all of his situations. Inshallah. So then, um, the Shaykh, he continues, he says, Man i'taqada anna huda ghayrin nabi alayhi salatu wa salam khayrun min hadihi fa huwa kafir bin nabi alayhi salatu wa salam kafirun bi deen al-islami kafirun billahi al-azim la yaqbil allahu azza wa jal minhu amal wa man yaqulu hadihi al-kalima ما عرف هدي النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام وإلا من عرف هديه حق المعرفة وقارنه بهدى غيره لوجد الفرق شاسعا والبون واسعا وهل يسوى أثر بالثرية هل تسوى الظالمات الظلمات بالنور هل يسوى الباطل بالهدى سبحان الله كيف يتأتى من آقل عرف هد هد هدي النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام ويقول مثل هذه المقالة أو يتلفظ بمثل هذه الكلمة أو يعتقد بمثل هذه الأقيدة ولهذا فإن وجود مثل هذا الاعتقاد ناقل لصاحبه من ملة الإسلام إذا أعتقد أن غير هدي النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام خير من خير من هديه أو أعتقد أن حكم غير النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم خير من حكمه وقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى أفحكم الجاهلية أفحكم الجاهلية يبغون ومن أحسن من الله حكما لقوم يوقنون وقال جل وعلا إن الحكم إلا لله والنبي عليه الصلاة والسلام إنما حكم بين الناس بحكم الله فهو مبلغ عن الله جل وعلا وما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى سيدان الشيء قوزن تسي so whoever believes that the guidance of of other than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is better than the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then by way of that, he has disbelieved in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he has disbelieved in the deen of Islam. And he has disbelieved in Allah al -Azim. And Allah will not accept from him any action. And whoever says this kalima, whoever says the likes of these words, then he, he's then he we know that he doesn't know the the you know what the Prophet ﷺ came with because truly, if we really if anybody looks into what the Prophet ﷺ came with, and he's just a straightforward, honest person who has no other intent, he will arrive to the conclusion always that this is the this is all good. Whoever the Prophet ﷺ came with is all good, is just, it's the most upright. It's the most upright, the most uh, correct in terms of his ruling, the rulings that he came with, everything that Allah sent him with. All of it is upright. 
and the truth. So the Sheikh he goes on to say that, that whoever says on uh, opposes this, then he hasn't truly, he doesn't truly know the Prophet and what he came with. And the Sheikh he goes on to say that does he gives some examples to us? He says, does like the bare earth resemble that which is enriched, and does darkness equal equate to what's light? You know, these are opposites, and the answer is no. It's a rhetorical question. Does falsehood equate to guidance and light? No. And the Sheikh, he goes on to say, how can somebody with intellect come after knowing the, for example, if what, what, how can somebody come even after knowing about the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ and, uh, and say the sort of things that somebody might come with, like as in this thing other than the message of the Prophet ﷺ is better, when clearly it's not. Or say these kinds of words. And the Sheikh goes to say, or... Oh, for example, believe or come with a kind of creed, uh, with this kind of creed and belief. Because the Sheikh says, anybody who has these kinds of beliefs that are in opposition to the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ and the Sunnah, um, then uh, when they come like this and they say, uh, oh no, this guidance other than the Prophet ﷺ is better, for example, like this, then they 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 leave the fold of Islam. If they're saying they were claiming they were Muslims, they leave the fold of Islam by way of this false belief of theirs. So the Sheikh, he continues and he mentions some of the things here the same as before. So the Sheikh gives us some examples. He says, for example, if somebody believes that other than the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ is better than the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ, or he believes that the ruling, other rulings and laws and legislation is better than what the Prophet ﷺ came with, uh, then, like that, the person leaves the fold of, of, of Al-Islam. It nullifies his religion. Then the Shaykh, he gave us uh, three ayahs. We can go through them. The first of which is Surat Al-Ma'idah verse 5. Surat Al-Ma'idah verse... Verse 50, sorry, not 5. Verse 50, do they then seek the judgment of the days of ignorance and who is better in judgment than Allah for a people who have firm faith? So that clarifies what the Shaykh has said. Then we go to Surah to Yusuf, verse 40. Surah to Yusuf, Yusuf, verse 40. This is about halfway down in the ayah. The command or the judgment is for none but Allah. The command and judgment is for Allah only. The next evidence. This is from Surah to Najm verse 3 and 4. Surah to Najm verse 3 and 4. This is about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nor does he speak of his own desires or his own desire. It is only an inspiration that is inspired as in the wahi that Allah sent by Angel Jibreel. Or the revelation in general. So, the Shaykh continues to move on. He says, "Qala rahimahullah, kalla dina yufadiluna hukm al-tawagid ala hukmihi fawa kafir." What tawagid? Hadi al-kalima mushtaqa min al-tawiyan, wa huwa tujawiz al-had, wa huwa mujawiz al-had. Faman tujawiz al-had fi ayy bab min abwab al-din ka an yu'tiya ghair Allah. عز وجل شيئا من خصائص الله تبارك وتعالى فإنه يكون بذلك عبد الطاغوت ولو لم يركع له ويسجد ولما سمع عدي قول الله تعالى اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا من دون الله قال للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما كنا نعبدهم قال أليس يحرمون الحلال فتحرم تحرمونه ويحلو ويحلون الحرام فتحلونه قال بلى قال تلك عبادتهم فالإبادة فالإبادة كما أنها تكون بالرقوء والسجود والدعاء تكون كذلك في التحاكم 
وتكون بالأصول والأسس التي يبنى عليها الدين فمن, تحا فمن تحاكم إلى غير حكم الله تبارك وتعالى فهو متحاكم إلى الطاغوت أفحكم الجاهلية يبغون ومن أحسن من الله حكما لقوم يوقنون So then the Shaykh he says in this paragraph here that we've read from just now he refers to the author of the book we're reading and that's Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn, ibn Abdul Wahab may Allah have mercy upon him he says he quotes the original text and is in the bold writing like those who prefer the judgments and legislation of the Tawagheed upon over over the judgments and legislation uh, over the judgments and legislation that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with then this person is a kafir if he's in this situation so if you prefer a, a legislation and you think that a legislation or a law or a judgment uh, other than what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with is better better than by way of that you have committed kufr and leave the fold of Islam and the Sheikh explained this last week actually as well but he mentions it again he says what does Tawgut mean we mentioned this in a previous book as well if whoever was attending those lessons they will also know but as a reminder inshallah he says a Tawgut what does a Tawgut mean he says this word it's from the word At-Tughyan and he explains At-Tughyan and Tughyan uh, At-Tughyan means um, you know going past the limits going beyond the limits going uh, going uh, beyond the bounds the boundaries the bounds so he says whoever goes beyond the bounds in any affair from the affair of the deen for example, giving other than Allah a thing which is from the rights of Allah, that are from His rights and specific to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. In one example, then by way of this, He is one who worships a Tawut, i.e., He's committed shirk. Even if He does not bow down or prostrate. Then the Shaykh brings the hadith. He says, when Adi heard the Prophet, uh, heard the speech of Allah, اتَّخَذُوا أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُهْبَانَهُمْ أَرْبَابًا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ So let's just get the translation of that first. Surah At-Tawbah, verse 31. Surah At-Tawbah, verse 31. They, Jews and Christians, took their rabbis and their monks to be their lords besides Allah. Yeah? When Adi heard this, he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, uh, we didn't worship them. And he said, is it not that they uh, make, uh, they make um, halal what Allah made haram? And they make haram what Allah made halal. And he said, yes. And then he says, that is their worship. Because why? Because changing the law of Allah, you know, is a shirk. Why? Because if somebody comes and changes the law of Allah, then by default, if we ponder over what's happening here, he's, he, he's making himself level. He's leveling himself to Allah's station. So he's making himself a lord, another deity besides Allah. In essence, and this is what leads a person to shirk by way of this. So this is the point of this hadith. And the shaykh, he continues, he says, he says, Ibadah, as we know, worship, as it can be by way of bowing down and prostration and dua, supplication, it can, it's also Worship is also in terms of the legislation, as in ruling. Yeah? So, making sure that you rule upon what Allah has ruled upon. And it also is related to the foundations as well of the deen. As well. So, the Shaykh, he goes on to say, so whoever, 
legislates or judges yeah with other than the 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 laws of Allah and the sharia of Allah jalla wa'ala, then by way of this he has basically uh made judgments and rulings to a tagut yeah because he's gone beyond the bounds because as we read the previous ayah further up here if you remember in il hukmu illa lillah that the judgment and law for setting the law and making judgments is for Allah only yeah Allah is a legislator not anybody else this is the reason why so then we read the other ayah was from surah al-maida verse 50 so um, I think we read this, but I'll, I'll go there again. Do they then seek judgment of the days of ignorance? And who is better in judgment than Allah for the people who have firm faith? Yes, we read that earlier on. That's a good reminder. So let's carry on. The Sheikh, he goes on to say, فَهَذَا هُوَ النَّاقِذَ الرَّابِئِ مِنَ النَّوَاقِذَ الْإِسْلَامِ مَنْ اِتَقَدَ أَنَّ غَيْرَ هَدِي النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أَكْمَلُ مِنْ هَدِهِ أَوْ أَنَّ حُكْمَ غَيْرِهِ أَحْسَنَ مِنْ حُكْمِهِ كَلَّذِينَ يُفَضِّلُونَ حُكْمَ الطَّوَاغِيتِ عَلَى حُكْمِهِ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ أي كُفْرًا أَكْبَرْ نَاقِلٌ مِنْ مِلَّةِ الْإِسْلَامِ So to summarize, and the Shaykh, he summarizes for us, he says, so therefore, this is the fourth nullifier that we've just discussed and finished discussing. And it is, and he quotes the original author again, he says, it is whoever believes that other than the guidance of the Prophet wasallam is more complete and better, or believes that the legislature or laws of other than what the Prophet Sallallahu came with are better or more complete. And also, like those who prefer the laws of other than Allah Jalla wa'ala, the man-made laws, let's say man-made laws or laws and judgments of other than Allah Jalla wa'ala over Allah's laws. If they prefer that over Allah's laws, then this, with all of this being said, this person is a disbeliever. And it renders the, if he was a believer, it renders him a disbeliever then in Islam, leaves the fold of Islam. So the Shaykh continues. He says, Al Khamisu, Man Abagada Shayan Mimma Ja Abihi, Al Rasulu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wallahu Amil Abihi Fakad Kafar. The Shaykh says, The fifth nullifier of Al-Islam Whoever hates a thing Which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Came with And even if he Does the action Then he has committed kufr So if he hates something That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with But even if he acts on it Because of this hate that he has in his heart For it he, uh, he, he leaves the fold of Al-Islam by way of that. The Sheikh explains this in further detail. He says, قَالَ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَنَاقِدُ الْخَامِسُ مِنْ نَوَاقِدَ الْإِسْلَامِ مَنْ أَبْغَدَ شَيْئًا مِمَّا جَاءَ بِهِ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَلَوْ عَمِلَ بِهِ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ مَنْ أَبْغَدَ شَيْئًا مِمَّا جَاءَ بِهِ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أي من ال... من ال... من ال... التي جاء بها أو العبادات التي أرشد إليها أو الأخلاق والآداب التي دعا إليها صلوات الله وسلامه عليه من أبغض شيئا من ذلك أي ولو ولو قل ولو قام بقلبه بغض وكراهية لشيء مما جاء به الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام فقد كفر. So then the Sheikh says, so whoever hates a thing that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came with. I.e., he says, from uh, the creed, the belief system that the Prophet ﷺ came with, or the types of worship that the Prophet ﷺ came with, um, uh, the manners and etiquettes uh, that the Prophet ﷺ came with and called to, call the people to. Whoever hates a thing of that, or the likes of that, yeah, then basically, if in his heart, he has this hatred and dislike for it. Then he has he has disbelieved. And the Shaykh continues, he says, وَهَذَا يَنْبَغِ عَلَى مَا سَبَقْ مَنْ اِتَقَدَ أَنَّ هُدَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ خَيْرَ الْهُدَى لَا يُمْكِنُ أَنْ 
يبغض شيئا مما جاء به لأن هديه عليه الصلاة والسلام خير خير هدي ولا يقارن هدى غيره بهديه فهديه عليه الصلاة والسلام أتم الهدي وأكمله. So then the Sheikh says that therefore it's incumbent, especially from what we've already previously said, what is previously said that whoever believes that the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the best guidance, then it's not possible for him to hear a thing that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with, because because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's guidance is the best guidance. Yeah, and there's no a comparison between the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and anybody else's. There's no match. So, why? Because it is the most complete guidance. Yeah, the most complete guidance that we have today. So then, the Shaykh continues, says, فَمَنْ أَبْغَذَ أَيْ كَرَهَا وَالْبُغْضُ وَالْكَرَاهَا عَمَلٌ مِنْ عَمَالِ الْقَلْبِ فَإِذَا أَبْغَذَ الْإِنسَانِ بِقَلْبِهِ وَكَرَى شَيْئًا مِمَّا جَاءَ بِهِ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ فَإِنَّ هَذِي الْبَغْضَ وَالْكَرَاهَ مُنَافِيَةً لِأَسْلِ الْإِيمَانِ بِهِ وَالشَّهَادَةُ أَنَّهُ صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول الله لأن مقتضى هذه شهادة تلقي ما جاء به عليه السلاة والسلام بالقبول والاتمئنان والارتياه والغبت وأن لا يجد في صدره الحرج بل يكون مرتاح الصدر لأنه عليه الصلاة والسلام مبلغ عن الله عن خالق الخلق عن رب العالمين جل وعلا مبلغ يبلغ للناس دين الله فوجود شيء فوجود شيء من البغض لما جاء به عليه الصلاة والسلام لما جاء به عليه الصلاة والسلام أو بغض شيء مما جاء به عليه الصلاة والسلام مصادم للشهادة بأنه عليه الصلاة والسلام رسول الله لأن لأنها إذا شهد أنه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مبلغ لدين الله لا ينتق عن الهوى أن أن هو إن هو إلا وحي يوحى صلوات الله وسلامه عليه فإن هذا يقتدي ويستوجب أن يتلقى كل ما جاء عنه صلوات الله وسلامه عليه بالارتياح وطمأنينة والقبول So let's stop there for a second So the Sheikh says So whoever hates or dislikes in, uh, uh, dislikes something then that's an action like he's talking about action now that dislike and hatred is it's in the heart. It's an action of the heart. It occurs in the heart. And whoever, whoever, whichever person hates in his heart, that which the Prophet Sallallahu came with, um, has a hatred and dislike for it, then it negates his, his iman. The foundation of his iman, it negates it. Meaning he leaves the fall of Islam and it, neg and it negates his second testification. You know, the first one, as we know, the first one, la, uh, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. وَأَشَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدٍ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The second testification, it negates it as well. The Sheikh says, because the Shahada, by saying the Shahada, you are openly testifying in the messengership of the Prophet ﷺ. Then if you go and start hating everything or whatever the Prophet ﷺ came with, then you're obviously, uh, 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 you know, opposing uh, your testification and you're nullifying it by way of doing it. So the Sheikh, he says that it's upon us to have acceptance. We need to uh, accept, we need to be in a state of acceptance and uh, uh, contentment and, uh, you know, happy and open about accepting and having good thoughts and everything about that which the Prophet ﷺ came with. And our chest should be open, with an open heart. We should have no, um, um, you know, or the feelings, negative feelings towards it. This is what the Sheikh has mentioned here. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu he's co he is just passing on the message that Allah sent him with. And Allah, He is the creator and Lord of everything that exists. And the Prophet Sallallahu came, his, Allah sent him on the mission, 
yeah, to complete the message that he was sent with. And as we know from the previous um, uh, ayahs that we read from Surah Al-Najm, that the Prophet Sallallahu came uh, and all, he did not speak from his desires, but he spoke the revelation that Allah sent to him. This is what the Shaykh is saying here. Then the Shaykh brings an ayah. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَذَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا So this explains what the Shaykh is saying. So if we go to the ayah, Surah An-Nisa, verse 65. Verse 65. Yep. But know by your Lord, they can have no faith. Faith until they make you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions and accept them with full submission. Yeah, so this is what the Shaykh is saying. So the Shaykh goes on to say, فَإِذَا كَانَ فِي قَلْبِ إِنسَانٍ فِي قَلْبِ إِنسَانٍ مَا كَرَاهِيَ لِشَيْءٍ مِمَّا جَاءَ بِهِ صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ وَسَلَامُ عَلَيْهِ أَيْنَ حَقِيقَةُ الْإِيمَانِ بِهِ وَأَيْنَ حَقِيقَةُ الشَّهَادَةِ بِأَنَّهُ صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ وَسَلَامُهُ عَلَيْهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ So if a person then in his heart he has hate and dislike for that which the Prophet ﷺ came with then where is the reality of this person's iman and where is the reality of this person's shahada that the, that the Prophet ﷺ is a messenger yeah, and prophet of Allah Jalla wa'ala the Shaykh asks a question then because if somebody comes and hates the son of the Prophet ﷺ or, the, or, or what the Prophet, prophet ﷺ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with Then then obviously he's opposing And is in a way rejecting What the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with Then where is his religion and where is his Iman, belief The Shaykh goes on to say وَلِهَذَا قَالَ الْمُسَنِّفْ رَحِمُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى الْخَامِسِ أي مِنْ نَوَاقِذَ الْإِسْلَامِ مَنْ أَبْغَذَ شَيْءٌ وَشَيْءٌ هُنَا نَكِرَ فِي سِيَاقِ الشَّرْطِ تُفِيدِ الْأُمُومِ أي مَنْ أَبْغَذَ شَيْئًا مِمَّا جَاءَ بِهِ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَلَوْ عَمِلَ بِهِ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ وَجُمْلَةً مَا جَاءَ بِهِ عَلَيْهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمْ أُمُورُ ثَلَاثَةً أَخْبَار وَأَوَامِرْ وَنَوَاهِ So inshallah, I think we're getting towards Maghrib time. So uh, I'll complete this small paragraph and then we'll stop there inshallah. Bismillah ta'ala. So another uh, up to five minutes and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up inshallah. So the Shaykh says, and this is why the author, Rahimahullah, of this book said, Al-Khamis, fifth, fifthly, i.e. the fifth nullify of Islam, is whoever hates a thing that the Prophet ﷺ came with. And the Shaykh folks is going to give us a benefit from a, from, a gram, uh, from a language, linguistic perspective, in terms of the grammar of Arabic. Yeah? So I'll try my best to explain this in English. Inshallah, hopefully it should be too difficult. Um, so basically the Shaykh says, he said a thing, shaitan, and he said it um, in the um, in a general form. Yeah, in a general form. Uh, and in that way, the way it's come in the sentence, it benefits uh, in a general sense. So a thing, it means anything, anything, right? And it's come in this way. And, it, and anybody who understands the Arabic language will understand this to mean anything that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. Anything that he came with. Not a particular thing, anything that he came with basically. Anything. Then they fall into this category. This is what the Shaykh has, uh, has mentioned to us. Then the Shaykh, he brings about uh, another benefit which is good for us to know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in general, he came with three affairs. He came with three things, three types of knowledge or inf uh, information yeah he came with news akhbar he came with commandments awamir and he came with uh, prohibitions and nawahi these are the three things that the prophet ﷺ came with news he came with news he came with commandments and he came with prohibitions and the shaykh he continues he says akhbarun an umur مغيبات من أمور سالفات وأمور آتيات وأمور تتعلق بأسماء الرب الخالق الذيمة وصفاته جل وعلا فمقتضى الشهادة له عليه الصلاة والسلام أن تصدق أخبار كلها 
So then the Shaykh he says, in terms of information, the Prophet ﷺ came with information about the unseen, the knowledge of the unseen. He came with information and news about the knowledge of the unseen, that which Allah revealed to him. He came with affairs of previous nations and previous times in the past. He came with affairs and news with regards to what's to come, prophecies. And he came with those, uh, with news and information with regards to the names of Allah Jalla and his descriptions of Allah and the descriptions of Allah Jalla Wala. And this, and believing in this, it, 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 it consists of, you know, it's related to our testification. The testification, Ashadu an la, Ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu. And that meaning that wherever the Prophet Sallallahu came with, we believe, that we believe that he came with the truth. Yeah, truthful, truthfulness. Whichever, whatever he told us, it was the truth. So inshallah, what we'll do is, we'll, we'll stop here today. And um, because we're getting close to Maghrib time. And um, inshallah, um, the lessons, we what we'll do is we'll start from next week onwards uh, we'll have a few lessons for a few weeks around 7.15 and then when Maghrib, Maghrib gets earlier we will then do the lesson after Maghrib so we're trying to keep it within the evening time so it makes it easy for everyone to attend inshallah so they can be, uh, be free for that time so inshallah we'll wrap up there Barakallahu feekum Subhanakallah wa bihamdik ashadu anna ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa tawbi ilayk wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh